Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and toy stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so make sure and check out ToyHacks.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is something a little different. Well, I shouldn't say little because this figure is a beast. This is the MBK KSR-01 King of the Sniper, or Sniper Prime, or I think I'm just going to call him Sniper Bot. This is a figure that I had no idea existed until last month a YouTube video popped up in my suggested views. I watched it and I was like, holy shit, I have to have one of these. And I shared the video with uh, my fellow con bros, as we call ourselves, Rodimus Primal, Bert the Stormtrooper, Kato, Matt, Larkin, the whole crew... And we all got one. It was like horrible peer pressure. Now, Kato got his first. And unfortunately, Kato snapped at the shoulder. And then mine arrived the next day. So I'm a little bit nervous to check this guy out because I felt so bad for Kato. Mike, Firetox, he ordered one. His order got canceled. I don't know about Bert yet. He got tracking information, but he can't seem to find it. So... So far, out of all of us, Kato and I are the only ones that got this figure, and uh, I am so thrilled. And what really excited me is this version is the limited edition. This is the metallic, uh, metallic and green version. There's a blue and white version. This is the metallic gray and green. And I ordered the blue and white because it was cheaper. And they sent me the limited edition, and, you know, I ain't even mad. So, real quick, let's take a look at the box. As you can see, this thing is huge. And what kind of disappointed me when he arrived from AliExpress, he wasn't in a box. This was in one of those giant bubble mailing envelopes, one of those plastic envelopes. And the box did not arrive in the best of shape. It's banged up here on the corner. Well, actually, all the corners are banged up, but still, it looks really good. I love this reflective, holographic-looking artwork, and the art is actually raised. So it's like a 3D print of this uh, picture, and this thing just looks amazing. This side of the box doesn't have anything. The back of the box, you got your product shots with the king of the sniper, king the sniper, <laughs> Got him there in robot mode, sniper rifle mode with his sword, and more sniper rifle mode shots. This side of the box, you got a holographic image of the sniper rifle. So, without further ado, let's get this awesome looking bot out of this box and check him out. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> Now, first things first, we're going to take a look at all of the accessories that the King of the Sniper came with. And I'm going to apologize in advance because I cannot get all of this stuff in frame. The accessories are big. The figure is big. The sniper rifle is big. So you're going to deal with a lot of extreme close-ups and handheld shots. So please just bear with me. So first things first, he does come with a sheet of instructions that has that great artwork from the box right there. And I got to tell you, these instructions 
are awesome. These are one of the best sheets of third-party instructions that I have seen in a long time. There was only a couple of parts, a couple of sections that I really had to kind of figure out on my own, but for the most part, these are perfect and you can transform your figure with no problem whatsoever. Next up, he has a bipod. And I really like this because it is a positional bipod that locks in place. He's got these little buttons here on the side, so the legs don't move at all until you press the button. And then you got these little sections where it locks right in place. And I think that's awesome. And it's really, it's sturdy, surprisingly. Nice, tight joints. And it works with a rail slide system. So once he's transformed into gun mode, you just slide this down below the barrel. Next up, we have the scope. Very futuristic looking scope that yes, you can look right through. Where's something I can look at? There we go. So you can look right through the scope and you can adjust it. I really don't, let me see. Put this over here. So if you can look through, if I can get something to stand up, this is kind of, this is difficult. So if you see that, you can turn right here and it kind of zooms in a little. I mean, it's not great, but it's a really cool option. I wish it did have some crosshairs in there, but oh well, it is what it is. I mean, these dials here, those are just for show. So I really like the scope. Now there is a little section right here that you can flip this back and you have a peg to attach this to robot mode. And to be honest, it's kind of lame how they show, but I figured out another way online that I'm going to try out. So there is the scope. Next up, we have this awesome looking sword. This is sweet. You got nice translucent plastic blade right here, another blade section there. And as much as I complain about translucent plastic, I like it for the weapon. It looks like an energy blade. Lots of nice details. You got K-01 right there. On the other side, same thing. This reminds me of the sword that Nightmare had in Soul Calibur, if you guys remember that game. So this is really cool. The figure can hold this. There's a couple pegs right there. It slots into his hand so he can wield it. And there's also a couple other options you can do with this sword using the barrel. Now, quick look at the barrel. There's the tip. Once more, love the details on this thing. It looks really good. You look right through it. And the barrel is metal. So that, that was surprising. And it can extend. So that's for rifle mode. So it's got a lot of length to it. But what you can do with the barrel and the sword here is right here the pommel of the sword fits in to the back of the barrel so now you have this long spear for robot mode so there's one option take that off fold the blade back this way and now you're going to take the barrel and slide it in this hole here if i can get it there's a little smaller section there on the inside line it up Put it in, and now you have, it's like this giant cannon that the figure can wield. So that's pretty much it for the robot accessories. Now let's take a look at the bullets. And I love how they did these. These, these bullets, it was confusing at first how you work them because the instructions for the bullets, I couldn't figure it out at first, but then once I figured it out, I'm like, oh, okay, I get it. But how this works, let's get these opened up. You've got the casing and the rubber bullet. The casing's a hard plastic, and you got the rubber bullet right here. Then you have this little blue piece and this little bar thing. So you hook the bar into the blue piece like so, take your rubber bullet, and attach it just like that. 
Now you're going to take the casing and you just simply push the bullet through the casing, make sure those little ridges are lined up, and there you go. It's a little bullet making kit. So I think these are awesome. You get 10 bullets all together, and unfortunately, I now only have nine because when I was fooling with my sniper rifle, I accidentally fired it because I, I had some trigger issues. Uh, I'll go over that later on. And one of my bullets apparently fired off into another dimension. So that's pretty much it for the accessories. Let's go ahead and take a look at the main figure himself. So here we have the KRS-01 sniper bot all opened up and out of the packaging. And this is a big figure. He's not really heavy, but he still doesn't feel cheap. So that, that's a plus. The details on this thing are amazing. And what I really like, listen to all of those ratchets. There are ratchets everywhere, which is fantastic. So lots and lots of great sculpted detail. The painting is amazing on this guy. What cracks me up is he has Optimus Prime's head. So I guess Optimus Prime decided to go from freedom is the right of all sentient beings to one shot, one kill. So yeah, I am really impressed with this guy. So let's see if I can get him in the review space and we'll take a closer look at him. Now here we get a better look at SniperBot and I'm gonna apologize again for how this may be filmed. I kind of rigged up something for him so he had an all white background so he could see him a little better. So there may be some shaky cam and I am going to do my best. But as you can see, this guy has great paint applications and molded detail all over him. He's got a few areas of translucent plastic there on the abs and the forearms, and that's really not too bad. Adds to the futuristic look of the character. We've got a translucent disc right there in the middle of the chest, kind of like an arc reactor. We got the Ace Berserker there on the shoulder and K01 on the other. So it's like they can't make up their mind what they're going to call this guy. You got King of the Sniper, Ace Berserker. I like Ace Berserker better. That's pretty cool. But it really doesn't fit with the Optimus Prime head sculpt. Let me go ahead and bend his knees down so I can get a little closer to the camera. But that is actually a really good head sculpt. Like I said, I don't know why they went with Optimus Prime. I guess because it's a universally known figure, but that looks really, really good. Not a big fan of the little vents right there below the mouth plate because it's, it kind of looks like a mouth, whoops. But still, it is what it is. I guess you look at it as, hey, they're vents. Now this figure is battery operated. The eyes can light up. So behind the figure here is a little switch right in there kind of hard to get a hold of so i got my little tweezers here flip that switch and oh, hold on like i said it's hard to get a hold of back here there we go the eyes light up a nice evil red so maybe this guy isn't optimus prime but that is really cool i thought with all this other translucent plastic there was other areas that would light up but nope it's just the head. So let me get that turned off. Like I said, it's hard to get a hold of because that switch is really back in there. So there we go. The lights are off. Moving on down the figure, more great detailing all the way around. Love the ratchets. I mean, this guy is just awesome. I, I can't get over how good this figure is and all the joints and everything seem to be really solid on mine now kato's broke i think it was right here in this hinge i think when he went to transform it there's all these double joints and something popped but after messing around with mine i almost think that kato's was already broke because i haven't ran into any problems whatsoever so let's go ahead and look at the articulation the head can look up and down and of course look side to side. He can't really do a complete 360 because he is going to hit the side here. This little section does pop off. So let me see if I take that off, if he can do the complete 360. 
and yes he can he just has these little shoulder pieces here that attach to cover up all the hinges there so take that off the head can move the head can move all the way around but really who poses their figures with their heads backwards so let me get this back on okay back to the arm articulation the arms can go up and down they lift slightly at the shoulder but that's due to transformation so up and down and they can stretch out like that they can also do a complete 360 there is a elbow rotation and a double bicep bend the hands are really cool they can do a or they have a wrist rotation and all the fingers have ball joints so there's a lot of posability you have in these fingers so each finger has a ball joint there at the base connected to the hand and there for the knuckles the same if you can see it with the thumb it has an extra ball joint as well so the hands can go in and out and rotate around which is really cool there is a waist rotation which really surprised me and there's hip flaps here hip skirts so the legs can move forward and it's squeaky and back they can also go out and in now it's funny how there's heavy ratchets on some joints and soft ratchets on the other my god that's squeaky then down on the knees there are knee bends nice deep knee bend it's actually a double joint if you look right there so if you hold right here and move the knee it doesn't look too bad but this separates looks a little crappy i like the nbk right there that's pretty cool let's see there is thigh rotation the feet have toes that can move and there is an ankle tilt and there is an ankle rotation but these ankle joints are super tight and just after what happened to Cato, I am not forcing any joints. Now, taking a look at the weapons, there is his sword and how these attach to his hand. If you can see, there's two little slots there in the hand. And the sword has these pegs here. So you just, if I can get this angled right, get the sword in, match it up to the slots and really press it in he actually holds on to the sword really good. I mean, there you go. That's that's pretty slick. Now there is a lot of wrist rotation that, you know, depends on how you pose him. That sword is going to flop around. But once you kind of find an area that it sticks, he holds it really, really good. Now, unfortunately, let me get the sword off is I'm not going to show you guys here. You're just going to take my word for it because I just don't have the space. When you attach the barrel to the sword, like I showed you earlier, it's just way too heavy for him to hold. You can attach the hand to the grip here, but because of this metal barrel, it'll droop and it falls out of his hand every time. The same if you go ahead and transform it into the spear. I mean, he can hold it and he can kind of prop it onto the ground, but it does tend to flop around. And since there's not much holding that in place, this will fall off if it droops too much. So you're just best off using the sword by itself. Now, bringing in the scope, according to the instructions, there is a hole right there behind the arm and you flip out that little peg I showed earlier and what you're supposed to do is attach the scope via that hole on the back of his arm so you got that going on and it really whoops it looks stupid and it doesn't stay attached of course let's see I think if you can turn it this way it still hooks in no if I can get it, there you go. So it'll hook in this way too, but once again, it looks stupid and there's a lot of scope that that little peg is holding in. Now, I happened to just been cruising around the internet and saw a picture of this guy with a scope mounted on his shoulder. And I was like, well, how does that work? So if you look up on the shoulder pads that I showed earlier, you've got a couple of holes. So take the peg and just fold it back the way it was, and then you line it up on the shoulder, press it in, 
And so there you have, of course he's too tall. Let me bring him down again. And it fell off. This is so hard to do. All the magic of editing. So there you go. The scope attaches to the shoulder really good. I mean, you can shake it. It's still going to pop off slightly, but it's on there a lot better. Let me say, give me good, good vibrations right here. It's really not going anywhere if you pose it. Now, this was just a random picture I found on the internet. It's not in the instructions, but it works. And I think it looks a lot better than just attached to the back of his arm. So now let's take a look at the King Sniper in sniper rifle mode. And unfortunately, I just do not have the room to transform this guy. So what I've done is I've got a clip of some stop motion animation of his transformation from the original video that I first discovered this figure from. And I'm also going to link that video right here if you guys want to check it out and see the whole video for yourself. Now it's in Chinese, but fortunately the whole video is just music. There's no words and it's really, really cool. So let's get this guy in gun mode and see how he hits the target. the KSR-01 in sniper rifle mode, and oh my god, look at the size of this thing. To just give you an idea of how big this is, I am six foot four. This is unreal. I love this thing. I mean, this is an awesome Transformers toy. Well, I guess it's not officially a Transformers toy. But you know what I mean. I mean, this is just too cool. I mean, <laughs> I can't get over this. And great details all over. Very futuristic looking. I mean, you're not going to get in trouble. I hope nobody thinks this is a real weapon. But my God. I mean, I saw the pictures on the internet and the video on internet. And I had no idea until you get this sucker in hand how awesome this is. I can't get over this. This is just unreal. So let's take a closer look at this fantastic weapon. Now, just like robot mode, sniper bots, sniper rifle mode is covered in fantastic sculpted details and paint applications. Now, all of these details are exactly the same on both sides. So no big difference there, but just look at this thing. This is an amazing figure. I am so impressed with this toy for something that was just a whim buy, more or less. Got the power on switch right there. The gun metal really looks good with this guy also. And all that teal and translucent plastic that kind of you know, really gives it that futuristic look like it's powering up. Now, the big difference on either side, or on the opposite sides of the figure, is here on this side, this is where you load the weapon. There's a little switch right there. Pull the switch back and then just pull this as well, and you see where you load the round. So take your little rubber tip bullet, just slot right in there, shut it up, pull the switch back to make sure that that's locked in place. And then on this side, that's where the charging handle is. So you'll pull that back in order for this to fire. So let's go ahead and look around the figure some more. I did have to take the barrel off or I'd be knocking my monitor off of my desk. But yeah, this looks great and really snaps together nice and tight. I actually have that separated right there because I'm going to open that up in a second to show you guys something. You've got the bipod right there, as I said. It just slides on via that rail system, the same as the scope. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these off, which will make it easier to manipulate this weapon. And you know, it's funny, 
without the barrel attached, it kind of looks like an alien's pulse rifle. The handle, like I said, I'm a big dude. The handle works. It could be a little bit longer for me, but, you know, I'm still not going to complain. I like the MBK right there. Main difference with robot mode and rifle mode as far as the detailing is this flap here is closed in robot mode and opens up for weapon mode. Now, the back of the vehicle, vehicle, back of the weapon, this and well, this section, man, I can't talk, right here is the only part I really can't get it to snap together tight. And that just may be the way I have the feet inside because the robot's feet are inside the stock right there. So now let me explain to you my issue with firing this weapon. When I first transformed it into gun mode, I locked and loaded, pulled the trigger and nothing happened. And I was so disappointed. I was like, come on, man. One of the main reasons everybody wants this figure is the fact it can fire. So what I discovered, let me go ahead and get this opened up for you. It wasn't the trigger here that released the spring to launch the projectile, but rather this bar. So you push the trigger back and it would cause the bar to move forward to release the spring. Let me show you. We'll go ahead and cock the weapon. Gotta make sure when you're cocking the weapon, you gotta make sure the trigger is forward. Cock that. So pulling the trigger, where'd it go? <laughs> Fold it back in there. Pulling the trigger does nothing but pushing this bar forward activates it so what it was straight out of the packaging is i had the bar in place i would pull the trigger but it only pushed the bar forward a little bit it didn't push it far enough forward to release the spring so i found a black plastic spudger that i clipped the tip off and trimmed it to the exact size of the tip of the bar and then glued it in place, which gave my bar more surface area for the trigger to push against. So lock that back in place. I had to trim it just right so it would fit. So now it's in there. And let's go ahead and cock this again. Pull that back. So now pulling the trigger activates the bar, no problem. So it took me a while to figure that out. I was actually sitting at work and it was like, aha, a light bulb went off, came home, did this modification, and now the weapon fires perfectly. So now let me get this put back together and we'll demonstrate the firing capability of the KSR-01. Okay, I've got a target set up downrange. You can see a Diet Mountain Dew bottle there on top of the sniper bot box. That's probably about eight feet away. So let's get this guy locked and loaded and test him out. Uh, also, I forgot to show off earlier, you can take the sword here and attach it to the rifle like a bayonet. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't connect underneath the barrel like so, which would have been awesome. It connects right there on the side. There is a peg on both sides of the blade, so you can put it on either side of the weapon. It just pops in like that and there you go. Like I said, I do wish it was underneath the barrel. So let's go ahead and get this locked and loaded. Open up the chamber here, and I've got a freshly made rubber-tipped round. Pop that in. Make sure that gets locked in. Now pull the charging handle back, and we are ready to fire. Weapon is hot. So now, let's see if I can take out that Mountain Dew bottle. Wow, <laughs> I took out some figures over there on my shelf. So that's impressive. That fired probably about 12 feet. So let's try again, see if I can take out the Mountain Dew bottle. Let's see, get another bullet here. I made up a few of them. Let's try this again. I'm really impressed that it went that far into my shelf. Took out a Titan Master, I believe. So, round is in. Get, gotta make sure it triggers up. Locked and loaded. Try it one more time.
Now that was a dud. So with this thing, it's like almost like a Nerf gun. Some bullets are really going to fire forward and fast. Others are just going to roll right out of the barrel. Let's try, let's do it one more time. The bad thing is I tested this out earlier and I hit the bottle no problem whatsoever. All right, one more try. Round is in. Weapon is hot. There we go. Third time's the charm. I love this thing. So, does the MBK KSR01 sniper bot belong in your collection? Well, this one right here is for you collectors who like your quirky bots, or even, dare I say it, gun enthusiast transformer collectors, because this guy is awesome. I had my doubts when I first saw him because you never know what you're going to get with these third-party transformers. I was expecting the crappy plastic, but was pleasantly surprised. This is a really good figure in my opinion. I had really no issues with him whatsoever other than the firing gimmick not working on mine and the fact he really can't hold his weaponry, but I kinda do like how I figured out how to make him hold the scope. That works really well, kinda gives him a shoulder mounted cannon. Now I do apologize, I didn't give you a size comparison, but I brought out Scorponok here just to show you that this guy is just a head shorter than Scorponok. So as I said earlier, I picked up this guy from AliExpress, took about three weeks to get to me, and he arrived in decent shape. Well, the figure did, the box not so much. I know there were pre-orders available on TF Source, but I do think they may be sold out as of the time of this recording. So if you want one of these guys, do check out AliExpress. I'm going to put a link how to get one in the description of this video. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I do offer channel memberships here on YouTube, and I gotta give a huge shout out to all my current channel members because it's support like yours that keeps this channel growing. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hello!